It's not acceptable to call me a retard. You know what? Fair enough. You can't change that you're a retard, and it's not very nice for me to call you a retard. I won't do it. Or call yourself or your friends retarded. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, retard? Let's discuss some of those comments that you've made in the past, and we, I'm you and really, I have discussed... I'm not really interested in discussing any of these comments, because, you see, I've had something like 400 million views on my YouTube channels in total. Um, I've got a huge audience that if people want to go see them, they can go watch them on my channel and see the context for, them, for themselves. From angry men to singers, people who make funny edits, weird animations of countries with feet, and even me. Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of politics on YouTube, and indeed politics on social media in general. But why don't YouTubers, or social media personalities in general, make good politicians? Well, we'll be taking a look at politics from the British perspective. Even if you don't agree with me, consider subscribing by the end of the video. The UK cannot leave the European Union. So I'm Chicken Wah, and I've been following politics mainly on YouTube for well over two years now, since the EU referendum. And I started making videos on politics just before Trump got elected. Hey guys, so you don't really need me to tell you any of, any of this, you could just go on Nowcast or something like that. Why? Well I noticed a video an American had made predicting a Trump victory at the US election. With a low subscriber count, high views, and my comedy channel struggling, I decided to change topics, and all of a sudden, came the realisation that politics was trending. With the UK election coming up, and being a Leave voter, it felt satisfying to research who I might vote for, and what the result could be. Because she hasn't been elected in power, so if an event occurred where she somehow uh, got a bad deal for Brexit, um, she would be seen as very unpopular, and so she would almost certainly lose her power as Prime Minister, and you'd see this Labour bubble growing again. And all of a sudden, I became majorly interested in Brexit. Little did I know it would become the popular reality show that it did. But one thing I've noticed is all these other people now joining in the conversation. Now, I was inspired by people like Jonathan Pye, an actor by the name of Tom Walker, who plays the character of an enraged left-wing journalist. But Brexit has achieved one thing. Whilst Brexit won't solve any of our underlying problems, it has exposed them. What's brilliant about his characterization is that he embodies the anger many feel towards our political elites. A bit like how Chunky Mark does. Because they're starving and it's to do with the fucking bankers. And we all know it and we know there's a fucking cabal that's running ramping paging around the world that wants to start a war in fucking Iran so they can fucking steal all their oil. Doing something and all you have to do is engage in the debate. Talk to people who think differently to you and persuade them of your argument. It's so easy and the left have lost the art. Stop thinking that everyone who disagrees with you is evil or racist or sexist or stupid and talk to them. Persuade them otherwise, because if you don't, I'll tell you what you get. You get President Trump. Right, I need to go for a shit and a shave. Uh, how long we got, Tim? All right, I might need to have to forego the shit. But he doesn't isolate the people listening, because he broadly and neutrally attacks the elites who aren't, simultaneously summarising the public mood and questioning it too. It's just one man shouting in front of a camera, and yet it keeps people engaged. But a YouTuber's job is to engage their audience, and unlike Pi, not everybody expressing their opinions online is going to be met with agreement. Now, Tommy Robinson isn't a political prisoner. He's not a martyr to free speech. He's a fraudster, because one of his many convictions is for mortgage fraud, as well as using someone's passport uh, as his own, as well as assault. And this time round, he had a suspended sentence for contempt of court. And the whole point of contempt of court, just so we're clear, is to stop court trials collapsing. Because if anything is seen to impugn justice, that people aren't getting a fair trial, then the entire trial can collapse. And either people who really should be in prison end up on the streets again, or you have to rerun the trial all over again 
and get victims to come forward all over again to talk about their traumatic experiences and the taxpayer has to shell out all this money. He was warned what would happen if he did the same thing. He did the same thing again. He ended up in prison, as he was told would happen. You can't mess about with court trials. Another early YouTuber who inspired me was the political journalist Owen Jones, with his channel expressing purely his own left-wing journalism. Now, you only have to look at the like and dislike ratios on his videos to realise just because he has an audience doesn't mean he's liked. Which raises the question, is popularity a measure of approval or a measure of fame? And just because populism wins votes in the modern age, is it because more people agree with populism politics or because populism is more famous and recognisable to people? They ain't got much power there in Gaza. Like, they've only got, like, I mean, their little network of tunnels and their few puny rockets, that's what it boils down to. Israel gets billions of dollars of military aid, it's a proper hardcore army, nuclear arsenal. So if you're trying to solve the problem, who are you going to talk to? Not that it's not bad that, that Israel has to deal with terrorist attack, of course it is, but what are we looking for, a solution or just a verdict on who's bad? And you know, Because that's not going to get any of us anywhere. Russell Brand is another popular political YouTuber, but like most YouTubers, they broaden their topics out to include YouTube drama or mental health social care and social advice. It is worth noting that just because people online express a certain opinion or do something which might brand them as having a particular viewpoint, doesn't mean they themselves believe in that viewpoint. We've seen this in YouTubers like PewDiePie, when he himself made anti-Semitic and racist jokes, yet his giving to charity and numerous apologies and behaviour since implies that he is neither an anti-Semite nor a white supremacist. But this is the internet, where anyone can have an opinion, any media outlet can drive clicks by expressing such opinion, and anybody can be bullied and hated on for anything. We all know that MPs in particular have received death threats over Twitter. What's interesting about the internet in general is that it's predominantly more suited towards the views of younger people because younger people tend to hang out on the internet, especially on Twitter, where people tend to be more Remainer friendly, where you'll find Remainers like EU Supergirl are popular. However, there are some hidden, tightly controlled corners of the internet that have strong white ring biases. Tommy Robinson's old Facebook page and any Tommy Robinson content is one of them. The Daily Mail comment section is noticeably favoured towards leaving the EU without a deal. Here on YouTube, there are a few older YouTubers expressing their anti-EU white wing views, such as secret sources. He wasn't shouting. He wasn't making any sort of fuss, any trouble, but the police arrested him. And Jeff Taylor. Hello there. Just as young Claude Juncker issues the ultimatum that the UK needs to do more before trade talks can commence, it seems that German industry has other ideas. They're not particularly flashy videos but they gain attention, along with numerous other people uploading news clips of people like Jacob Rees-Mogg and other people on the right, because those older voices are lost and they need a corner to go to on the internet. But what's even stranger is the younger generations of people who upload to this site. They have even stronger opinions. On the day of the referendum, I thought we were going to lose. I campaigned for Brexit for months, I'd go and hand out leaflets, and at the time, I was at the place where they're sort of counting the votes in my local area. And I really thought that that was it. Remain were going to win. We'd spent months and months, and many people have spent years, even decades of their lives, fighting to get Britain outside of the European Union. But we didn't lose. We won. In 2016, on the 23rd of June, 17.4 million people voted to leave the European Union. 
one of the greatest democratic decisions this country has ever made. And people like Sargon of Akkad, Politics UK and Count Dankula have gone on to be directly involved in politics by joining either UKIP or the Brexit party. Pi, on the other hand, now has his own stage show. I think there's an illusion that a YouTuber or someone with fame and following makes a good leader. Yes, they might have a strong opinion and an audience who share that opinion, but that audience comes from all over the world. They follow you to entertain them and their lives are not directly affected by your opinions, even if they share them with their friends. Information may be valuable, but it still has no legal precedent in running a democracy because ultimately, voters make up their own minds. But fake news has plagued the internet over the past few years, which is why people turn to fact-based YouTubers like TDLR News. In 2016, when the Brexit vote happened, about 65% of people living in the EU said they identified as a citizen of the EU in the hope of gaining correct, unbiased information. Again, these aren't the most entertaining videos on YouTube, they're actually quite nerdy. But it shows that as much as there is an audience for strong opinions, there is also an audience for hard facts. Perhaps ultimately, it shows a deep underlying mistrust of both the mainstream media and the opinions expressed by our politicians. But when you want to switch off and you're fed up with the whole thing, audiences turn towards satire like Joe and Daniel Brostock. Ultimately, if Brexit has given any benefits, it's in the expression of diversity and culture and art that it's created. A politician's job is to do things to help everyone, while a YouTuber's job is to simply express an opinion or fact to entertain their own audience. Some take it seriously, others make a joke out of it. Some attempt to engage with the people they hate, others shut them down. But ultimately, a social media personality is a powerless protester to the real world. And as long as the internet remains a secondary source of information and legal authority, that will always be the case. But do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.